Hey, greetings everyone. Glenn Calloway from The Basement. Uh, today I am doing the 10 album challenge. Now, I was made aware of this from my good buddy Rob at Northern Revolutions. He has a video response to this, and that's where I discovered it. Uh, if you're not a subscriber to Rob's channel, please do so. Rob is an awesome dude. Um, partner in crime on the Wednesday chats and uh, a good friend. He discovered this from a guy named Channel 33 RPM. Now, that guy needs no help from me. He's got like 60-some thousand subscribers. So, Channel 33 RPM. I'm thinking about dumping Larry and going with this guy. Larry's only got 49,000 subscribers. Okay, so let's get started. The whole premise of this is that your wife or significant other, whoever that happens to be, picks 10 albums that they want you to talk about. So uh, I was frightened to death to do this. <laughs> I thought I would be, uh, but my wife did a really good job. And first, let me say, my wife, Lynn, is the most amazing human being ever. I am the most luckiest, most fortunate man on earth. I, I just, uh, words cannot describe this woman. She's amazing and um, always so supportive of my crazy musical obsession and uh so here we go lynn let's get going on this first peter gabriel um now lynn's favorite peter gabriel song is uh salisbury hill which is one of his greatest songs um we typically listen to that on a comp called shaking the tree there's a lot of great songs on this um, she also mentioned the song, Don't Give Up. So I brought, rather than discuss the comp, I brought So. And uh, this has Don't Give Up on it, the uh, classic song with Kate Bush, which is her performance on this, is one of the great guest performances ever. In Your Eyes is on here. Uh, Mercy Street. I mean, this is just a sledgehammer. This is just such a friggin' incredible album. I'm glad uh, and don't give up. Thank you, Lynn, for mentioning Peter Gabriel. That's an awesome start. Next, The Kinks, one of my favorite bands. Again, we typically listen to a comp. By, like I, I kind of put comps on my memory sticks in the car on some of them, and The Kinks is one. And so Lynn... Uh, has fallen in love with the song Waterloo Sunset, which would be in my top five songs of all time. So we are just, it's kismet today. No wonder we're together. We're made for each other. Something Else by the Kinks is the album that Waterloo Sunset came on. This is a great freaking album from the Kinks. Very strong. I um, don't think there's too many weak tracks on this album. Waterloo Sunset closes it and um, just... To have that song is uh, worth buying the album for. But Death of a Clown, which was uh, Dave Davies sings, is one of my favorite Kink songs, actually. Um, crazy songs like Harry Rag. Um, great, great album from the Kinks. Something else. Again, Lynn, thanks for mentioning that. Next, one of my favorite bands from the 80s. I was not a big fan of the 80s for many years, but this album I always loved. Tears for Fears, Songs from the Big Chair, great album. Lynn is a big fan of this album, too. Uh, Everybody Wants to Rule the World and Shout, uh, Head Over Heels. I mean, this is just a great freaking record from start to finish. These guys are amazing. Um, so Tears for Fears, number three, another one. This is very impressive, a very impressive list. Jackson Brown, here's what I remember about I've been a Jackson Brown fan since the first album came out. It's self-titled Jackson Brown, but it, a lot of people call it Saturate Before Using because that's on the cover. So we'll go with that. Um, so that's 1971 or 72 when that came out. Doctor My Eyes, all that. So I know Lynn was probably somewhat aware. Lynn and I have been together since 1991. So Lynn... Um, uh, Lynn, I, I'm not sure her history going back to the 70s with Jackson Brown and stuff like that, but we lived in an apartment in downtown Toronto. This is what I vividly remember when this album came out. I'm Alive, Jackson Brown. This is his strongest album since the 70s. Um, I think after, 
I'm trying to think of what came out after uh, uh, Running on Empty. After that, he, his albums got a little weaker. The Pretender was good. And then, I don't know, that whole era. And then after that, it started to drop a little bit, in my opinion. The, the, they were, the, the early ones were his classic years. But he came out with this album in the 90s. And uh, it's fantastic from start to finish. This is a great album. And I remember getting up in the morning. We'd be getting ready to go to work. We, we, we worked at the same place at that time. And uh, we'd be getting ready to go to work. And I think we were in the same place. It doesn't matter. Uh, we were both getting ready at the same time anyway, and I would put some tunes on, and I would put this album on, and she started to fall in love with it, and particularly fell in love with a song called uh, Blue and Black, Sky Blue and Black. Beautiful, beautiful track. So that's why Lynn wanted me to mention this album, because that is such a uh, favorite song of hers. Great album from Jackson Brown, I'm Alive. Another good pick. Hall and Oates. I was I've been a Hall and Oates fan since She's Gone. When I first heard the song She's Gone back when it came out in 1974 or whenever it was. Uh, Daryl Hall, one of the great singers of all time. Lynn's a big fan of Hall and Oates, and we play this album all the time when we go on a car trip. It's live at the Troubadour. It's usually the first thing that gets put on when we're driving to Florida or going somewhere where we're going to be in the car for a few hours. This usually is the first album that goes on. We play both CDs. I wish I had this on vinyl, but I do not. This is great performances from Hall & Oates. Every song you want to hear, plus really good deep cuts. Great band. Some of the songs are extended. Um, just a really, really solid live album. Hall & Oates rock. Another good pick. Okay, Mark Cohen. Self-titled Mark Cohen album. Another one that has a great meaning to us when this came out. Um, we played the crap out of it, and it was pretty early on in our relationship. Uh, does it say the date when this came out? 1990, 91, the year we got together. Isn't that crazy? Um, fantastic record. Walking on Memphis was a huge hit. Mark Cohen's got a great voice, great songwriter, great singer. Um, everything's great. This is a great album. I've been listening to it for a long time. One song, the last song on the album, True Companion, was kind of adopted to us as one of our songs. It's a beautiful trick, uh, uh, song, uh, I'm Asking You to Be My True Companion. We played it at our wedding, um, along with Here, There, and Everywhere. They were our two wedding songs. And, um, yeah, it's an amazing, amazing album. Mark Cohen still stands up today, I'm quite sure. Oh, the amazing Kathleen Edwards. I believe this is someone else I turned Lynn on to. I remember taking her to see a con. There was like a free festival thing going on in Toronto. And uh, we went and watched it and Kathleen Edwards was there. And that's why I went down. And uh, she put on such a great show and Lynn fell in love with her. And uh, we've been big fans really ever since. This is our favorite Kathleen Edwards album. It's called Voyager. Uh, this came out about 12 years ago, I think. Fantastic record. Uh, Kathleen was going through, through a, a divorce and uh, some other I I issues. And this album is very introspective. A lot of talk about that kind of thing, breakups and just trying to get by. And it's a beautiful, beautiful album. Kathleen Edwards' Voyager. Um, she ended up taking six years off from her career and opened a coffee shop called Quitters Cafe. Get the joke. And uh, in the last year or so has gone, come back with an album called Total Freedom, which is really good and getting rave reviews. And she's been on tour, tour in the U.S. and touring and her career has just taken off again. She's an amazing singer-songwriter and a great live performer too. Kathleen Edwards, great, great record. Uh, I know Lynn's favorite songs. Uh, change the Sheets, Empty Threat. I think they'd be the two that would be her big favorites on this. That's pretty cool. I like doing this. David Bowie. Now, we've both been David Bowie fans forever. Um, now I've become more of an obsessive Bowie guy, and I think Lynn has enjoyed my Bowie journey and re re revisiting Bowie's... Uh, entire discography over the past year we've listened to a lot of bowie in the car lynn's favorite bowie song is changes and uh so i brought this album changes one bowie 
probably the best. This would be top 10 comp of all time. It's fantastic. I mean, every freaking track on this is amazing. Every one. This is such a great album. Space Oddity, A John I'm Only Dance and Changes, Ziggy Stardust, Suffragette City, Gene Genie, Diamond Dogs, Rebel Rebel, Young Americans, Fame, and Golden Years. Fantastic record. Now, the album that Changes came off of is Hunky Dory, another great album from Mr. Bowie. Changes are on here. Oh, You Pretty Thing is on here. Life on Mars, which is uh, one of, is my favorite Bowie song, and I know Lynn loves that song a lot, too. Um, songs for Bob Dylan, Queen Bitch, the Bule Brothers. Uh, uh, great, great record and amazing artist. Turned into one of my favorite artists of all time. A very important album that came out. Lynn's favorite song is You Can Call Me Al from Graceland. I mean, this is Paul Simon's probably biggest selling album, I would think. Um, a game changer, brilliant record, introduced a lot of people to African uh, music. And um, wow, You Can Call Me Al's on here, Under African Skies, uh, Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes. The Boy in a Bubble, I mean, just a, this album just is one of the great albums of all time. Graceland. My wife has good taste, eh? I didn't know. Uh, last but not least, a band that she has grown to love over the past year or so, because I have grown to frickin' love them over the past year or so, thanks to Larry Graves giving me uh, the Black Sea to listen to. I went, holy crap, these guys are good, and that's XTC. The album that I play constantly is English Settlement, one of my top ten albums of all time now. Um, Lynn gets to hear this a lot in the car and has really mentioned that she's really grown to love XTC. My nep Our nephew Jack, when he comes over, he's become a big XTC fan, so it gets played a lot. We go downstairs and we play board games. When Jack comes over, we put on music. XTC always gets played. I mean, this has got senses working overtime on it, which is a classic, just a great track. You just can't help but tap your foot and sing along to. Um, there's some great songs on this, Runaway. Brilliant, brilliant album. But XTC is just an amazing band. Mr. Andy Partridge, one of my favorite dudes on the planet. Oh, I think that's it. This has been fun. Thanks, Rob, for doing this because it motivated me to do it. Um, if anybody else is going to try this, check it out. Try and do the challenge with your significant other. And uh, everyone have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Please give me some thumbs up. And uh, thank you, Lynn, for pulling these records. I love you, and we'll talk later.